and Monsieur Gauthier, Jan de Koenig, Rugby 365. Um, if you have to pick one moment in the match which turned the match, on which the match turned, what would that be? There are so many things that happen in a game, so many key moments in this game. Maybe when you're leading 7-0 and Etzbeth cut off the uh, ball, uh, that was a strong moment for us and we weren't able to finish. Then... Instead of maybe being on 12 or 14 points, sometime afterwards uh, it was 7-7. These are things that happened in the game. I'm also thinking about when we were moving forwards under the posts towards the end of the game. If we'd made the ball available quicker, we might have finished the phase it differently. I'm sorry, I'm getting an echo. But yeah, there's a few moments when Antoine wasn't able to feed the ball accurately. There are events in the game, there are facts in the game which uh, add up or added to all the others are uh, notorious, but it's difficult to think of a particular key moment. But yes, in this game, so many things went on, so many things. Fabien? Uh, and a question for Antoine also. We talked about a number of events in the game. Some of them are linked to the refereeing. What did you both think of Ben O'Keefe's refereeing? There were several incidents in the game. We saw an elbow in Antoine's face, a clear out with a hit on Jonathan Dante's face. Are these the facts that you're talking about in the game? And do you both, and what did you think overall of Ben O'Keefe's uh, refereeing? Well, what did you think of it? Uh, with a external view. It's hard to talk about things because there's a lot of disappointment, a lot of frustration, but uh, there are probably images we'll see that will give, make us even more frustrated. There are few clear things that should have been blown but which where the whistle wasn't blown, but we could have had a penalty at a crucial moment. Uh, these are easy things to blow up for, but I don't want to... Uh, be a bad loser uh, and moan about the refereeing. But I'm not sure the refereeing was up to the level of what was at stake today. And I don't think it's one person refereeing. There are TMOs, there are assistant referees. They have time to review the images as we do as the game's going on. So they can also uh, take part in the refereeing. For me, I can understand the players' frustration. I really do understand it. I ask them to be brave, but at such times, me, I will uh, say I will accept it as it's already been the case in the past. I accept the decisions. Just to say that this doesn't take anything away from the South Africans' performance who showed their experience, their uh, consistency in their game, who had a very good second half, half and dominated us in the fight. And I don't, want, uh, I don't want to take that away from them. They played a great game. Yes, of course, it's... Uh, if we talk about the refereeing, because you were talking about the refereeing... But uh, we can talk about the opponent, but talk about the refereeing. I'm not going to go there. I will uh, congratulate the refereeing. We've worked with them before the World Cup, but during the World Cup, we worked with them this week to try to play along with them, and we will continue to work that way. I, 
understand the player's position and you have to understand my position uh, uh, straight after the game. A lot of frustration, a lot of emotions, hard to take. So I can understand uh, we talked about it briefly and we all watch this game. But especially to say, to congratulate the South Africans, this team and their staff and to wish them uh, to continue their progress with respect and fair play. Yes, good evening. Axel from Europe 1 on your left. I remember there was also what you call the arrow of time, saying here is where we want to go. And regularly you told us we are where we want to be. So this evening you're obviously not where you wanted to be. But beyond the disappointment, is there already some analysis? Are you already looking into the future? Is it a bit too early? Well, it's hard. I can understand your... Uh, question is about about this vision that allows us to work consistently with a methodology with the players to make them grow we wrote for four years we wrote a beautiful page of uh, the history of fred trugby that the players can be proud on uh, the pr players can be proud of the players can be proud the staff can be proud the french federation can be proud and we can also be sad tonight uh, because of the result And of course, the arrow of time is a, is a metaphor. It enabled us to have a very clear vision. But as I also said, this World Cup, before, before when I was talking about it, uh, there, there's a, there is a, a French team that will continue to play. They will play the first game of the Six Nations tournament in Marseille and the players will continue to play and uh, develop. Two players are ceasing to play, that's sure. Uh, Ramato Fenu being one of them. Uh, but what we've lived through, what the players lived through, is part of the writing of the book of the French team. Good evening, gentlemen. First of all, thank you for the emotions for everything you made us, enabled us to live. A question about what was said in the changing rooms just after the game. So your speech, uh, Fabien, and uh, your speech, Chartouane. I didn't want to, there, there are intimate moments, I'd rather these things remain between us. I congratulated the players. I congratulated all the people who worked as part of the French team, including the staff. And I asked them all to be brave, as they have been for the last four years. Uh, that's a summary. Good evening, Fabien. I wanted to ask you a question. Does this uh, defeat uh, put your future at the head of this team in question? Well, no. I've got a contract until June 2028. Good evening, Fabien and Antoine. If I'm not wrong, your first uh, knockout game in a large competition, well, for this generation, is that what made the difference perhaps tonight against South Africa? That's hard to say, but it's true that it's our first knockout game, our first important uh, meeting, and we didn't succeed. That we didn't leave with a victory, even if we didn't uh, miss our, even if we played a good game. We played a big game in terms of intensity, in terms of content, but unfortunately, we didn't win. And of course, that will make us learn. We'll gain experience from it, but. Today, in the present, it's hard to take. There's, of course, there's a lot of frustration and disappointment. But in the future, we will learn from this kind of game. Good evening, gentlemen. Antoine, to talk about the game and of this ending to the game, did you hesitate to go for touch in a field rather than taking that penalty to score a try? And Yeah, the question arose. We watched... 
the scoreboards. There were still 10 minutes left. We knew that we could get back into this, into their side of the field and give ourselves a possibility to score uh, with, uh, with our forwards and the defence on the mould. So we took that option. But uh, we can always talk about the choices, but at the time it seemed to be the right option. Um, you knew it was going to be a physical game. Um, how did you feel your players dealt with the physicality of the South Africans overall? Like that, in the heat of the moment, I thought we were uh, largely equal to them. We had some very strong moments. We didn't always convert them. And there were other times where the South Africans were on top. But really, I felt that we matched them. I haven't got the stats or the data in front of me because it was a very loaded game in terms of sequences and uh, events, match events, so I can't go into detail. But the feeling I have is that we uh, very much matched uh, the South Africans uh, with uh, strong moments and uh, weaker moments, of course. Good evening, Fabien. It's now 15 weeks that you've all been together to prepare for this World Cup. Are there things you would have you'd like to change? Have, do you have any regrets about the preparation for this World Cup or the first five weeks of this World Cup? None. None. No regrets. No regrets. We, you're allowed to lose like we did today. The players have the rights. We have the right. I think we did everything to optimise our potential. We optimised it. We uh, also dealt with all the events we had over the last 15 weeks. Fabien, in the last uh, press conference, you said you feared the strategy of the South Africans with their team uh, set up, with the changes in their team. Is that how you analyse this defeat, that the team, their finishing uh, team, for example, managed the game better? Well, they were able to take the lead at a key moment. And it's true that until the end, we were... Uh, faced with, uh, we were trying to uh, take the lead back. Uh, these are games that are played, uh, well, on one uh, on one point, we had strong moments as well in the second half. We had uh, those uh, moves that Antoine talked about where we made very good progress, where we had very favourable options that we weren't able to conclude because they, they play well. They play well, they play accurately, that they can slow down the rocks, they can do what needs to be done to uh, slow us down. Thank you very much. I'll just finish answering. So in terms of strategy, yes, we, we saw they optimised the high kicking, which brought them two or three strong moments from... Uh, high cross kicks. We'd also prepared for this, but they managed to be effective that way. But we were also effective on a lot of the things that we'd also prepared. But uh, it all came down to one point. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's the end of this press conference. Thank you.